everyone. Thanks for tuning in to, for episode 9, Crabs, Bristle Worms, and Pods, The Miracle Tank. If you watched the last video... What happened to all the excitement? Fine! <laughs> <laughs> Hello, everyone. Thanks for tuning in for episode 9, Crabs, Bristle Worms, and Pods, The Miracle Tank. If you watched the last video on our quarantine experiences, you know that we not only have our 90-gallon display tank with the sump, but we also have a permanent 30-gallon tank that we use for quarantine. The main display is currently being medicated due to a stupid, stupid cross-contamination mis mistake that we made, but I'll cover that in another video. And the quarantine tank is presently running fallow. For those of you who don't know what that means, it means that there can be no fish present in the tank for a period of time. Many marine parasites like ick or marine velvet require attaching to a fish to complete its life cycle, and without a fish, the cycle ends and the parasite dies. Some parasites can live a surprisingly long time without a host, and so you must wait long enough for them to be completely gone before reintroducing fish to the tank. For my purposes, I needed to do it for six to eight weeks, and thankfully we're almost through. I'm excited to get more fish in there soon, once we decide what's next. The strangest thing has happened in the quarantine tank, though, in the past six weeks. I was tossing in a cut-up piece of shrimp every couple of days, and sometimes a few pellets because the thin striped crab didn't seem to like the shrimp all that much. The tank was super nutrient-rich with everything I was throwing into it, but it was staying extremely clean. I finally realized why. <laughs> About five months ago, I picked up some live rock at the local fish store and put it into the quarantine tank with Flash and Penelope. I got it specifically because I could see pods, estuarine and starfish, bristle worms, and feather dusters all over it. My sterile tanks needed some diversity, and I wanted to go the natural route and make use of some smaller critters that a reef tank can have. My husband planted seeds of worry that there were things on it that we didn't want in the tank. And so after I picked it up at the store and transported it home in a bucket of salt water, I left it sitting on the floor near the tank without a heater for about a week. I figured most of what had been on it had, had died off. But after throwing some food in the bucket, I saw the feather duster coming out and finally thought, what the hell? That's what the quarantine tank is for. As soon as I put it in the tank, the rock came alive. Tons of stuff started coming out and hunting for food. It was crazy. I didn't expect to so much to still be alive since the temperature had probably been around 65 to 70 degrees for a minute. That first night, I took these videos and had fun watching all these little life forms, but over the next few days, Flash, my lemon peel angel, went to town and ate everything in sight. No more feather dusters, no more bristle worms, and no more pods. The only thing I occasionally saw were some estuarine starfish. It didn't take him long to eat this entire buffet, and I thought, well, there goes that experiment. Until recently, I thought everything in that rock had been decimated, but the longer the fallow period went on and the way the tank stayed so clean, I started to suspect that something was up. One evening, as the light on the tank was dimming, I sat near the tank and tossed in some food. Bam! Bristle worms came from everywhere! I looked closer and saw tons of pods climbing on the rock and in the Kato that I had stuffed in the back of the tank. It was amazing! Without realizing it, I had created the perfect display refugium, and my pod population was exploding along with the bristle worms. I think I've identified them now as moonid isopods and gamma red amphipods. The moonid isopods, sometimes mistaken for amphipods, are beneficial herbivores that eat diatoms, microalgae, and even macroalgae. Gamma red amphipods are shrimp like crustaceans that are opportunistic feeders. There are reports that they possibly eat palithoa or zoanthids, maybe a cans. There's even one report I found of large ones eating the mantle of a tridacna clam. I do not currently have any corals at all and have been mostly a bit intimidated to buy them due to the additional learning curve and increased tank maintenance efforts, but one of these days I'll work up some courage. <laughs> Holy shit. I know my options are rather limited because my lemon peel would probably pick at them and may destroy them. The idea was to first put them into the quarantine tank and let them get established before fragging them and putting some of them into the display tank. Just in case. I'm a little bit concerned about the possibility of the pods eating my future corals, but honestly, this tank looks so good compared to the display tank, where none of this live rock was ever introduced, that I think I have to risk it. I have not cleaned the sand in this tank for six to eight weeks. I occasionally scrape the glass, but even that task has greatly diminished. I'm also fairly certain that the crabs are eating the pods when they get close enough. After the display tank is completely clear of its current medication, I plan to add some sand to the sump along with a few of these overpopulated rocks in the quarantine tank to create a better refugium. Previously, we've only had the Kato growing in there, but it's time to expand. Once the rocks are moved, there should be bristle worms, pods, and asterina starfish in the sump that could end up migrating into the display over time. 
Keeping the sump clean is always an annoying task since I don't usually run the socks unless there's a lot of something floating around that I want to catch after, say, scraping the glass. I'm hoping that by creating a habitable zone for the microfauna and my two crabs, I'll be able to- I'm hoping that by creating a habitable zone for my- <laughs> I'm hoping that by creating a habitable zone for microfauna- <laughs> I'm hoping that by creating a habitable zone for my microfauna and my two crabs who don't care how habitable is pronounced, I'll be able to let them do the heavy lifting from now on. Yes. You- yep. <laughs> <laughs> That's exactly what I needed to say. It's exactly what you are. <laughs> <laughs> nice try, dude.